All righty. So we want to bring in uh, U.S. Senate candidate Jeff Dial, uh, Deal, excuse me, Deal with us. He's former state co-chairman for the Trump campaign in uh, Massachusetts as well. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you being here. First and foremost, if this is the president's attempt to drain the swamp, uh, we have J. David Cox, another statement from uh, him, the president of the AFGE, who said, this is more than union busting, it's democracy busting. What do you think, Mr. Deal? Well, I don't agree. First of all, my mother was a union worker for 40 years from the day she started till the day she ended. Uh, I think unions obviously have their place uh, in American society, in the workforce. I think it's great. I think all this is trying to do is put, um, you know, there's 80 percent of the American workers are working for, in the private sector. Uh, it just allows uh, government employees to be subject to the same performance standards uh, and, and potentially being fired if they're not doing their work. I think that's all that's being attempted here. Congressman, there is a, a little point here as well. This organization, the uh, AFGE, endorsed Hillary Clinton for president in 2016. Uh, can this action be separated from politics at the end of the day? Uh, no, I think, again, look, we had a very successful tax reform package that passed recently that uh, is giving more uh, to the economy right now. And I think in order to pay for that, I think we need to make sure that, you know, public employee unions are, uh, again, performing accordingly. And I think what they're trying to say is, look, 25 percent of your workday, uh, you know, to going towards union activities, I think they should, that should be the cap. That seems reasonable. Uh, so I don't think there's politics. I think it's just trying to make sure that uh, public sector employees are doing the work they're expected to do. All right, so let's talk about the news of the day. And you're running against uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren. So let's use a summation from her that fits pretty neatly into what we're talking about, the breaking news uh, this morning. Uh, she tweeted out, President Trump's wild back and forth with Kim Jong-un shows once again that he has no strategy. If Donald Trump wants to demonstrate real leadership, he needs to develop a plan and commit to work towards a peaceful resolution with North Korea. Um, this vacillation between talking and not, and potentially talking uh, now, does this validate the concerns that many have that the president does not come into this talk with North Korea with a plan and didn't go through the typical steps? Boy, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, Elizabeth Warren just shows how out of touch she is with what's going on. She was the one that tried to block uh, Mike Pompeo for be from becoming Secretary of State. We've had wild success uh, since he's come into the scene. And uh, look, we've seen three Americans return from North Korea. We've seen them dismantle, literally dismantle their nuclear testing facility. We've just seen this morning uh, the North Korean president and South Korean president meet together. Uh, we're seeing tremendous success that could end that Korean conflict, something that hasn't happened in a long time. And Elizabeth Warren certainly is uh, wrong on this. We know you uh, were an early and still a vocal supporter uh, of the president. I want you to listen to President Trump uh, just a, a few weeks ago. I was watching during the campaign, and Hillary was sitting right there, and Pocahontas was up, and she was so angry. Look, we love each other, the women, the men. We love each other. Everybody loves she was so angry. I said, you know, I think she's losing the entire male audience and many of the women. The most important word there in that, sta that uh, statement there was uh, Pocahontas from the president. I read that you will not use that, as the president has, to describe uh, Elizabeth Warren. As you know, um, the Native American population is very important there in the state of Massachusetts. I'm sure the population is important to you. The National Congress of American Indians consider the president's use of Pocahontas in describing Elizabeth Warren as a slur. So will you call on the president, the man you support, right now to stop using Pocahontas as a racial slur against Elizabeth Warren? You know, I think Elizabeth Warren needs to stop uh, pretending that she has a heritage she didn't, uh, doesn't, will, is not unwilling to take a test for. The fact is she took two minority hiring positions, uh, one at University of Pennsylvania, one at Harvard, that she wasn't entitled to based on, you know, family lore, which, again, she won't apologize for uh, that Deal, history of taking those I'm going to bring you back yes. to the question. Should the president continue to use Pocahontas as a racial slur? Will you call on the president to stop calling Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas as a racial epithet? Well, like I've said, I'm not going to use that uh, term during this campaign. Are you comfortable uh, with the I president using it? 
Look, the president, you know, certainly it goes about the way he talks in politics uh, differently. He tweets, obviously, differently than I would. Uh, so I think in this case, you know, it's up to the president what he's going to do. For me, my race is all about making sure the people of Massachusetts know that Senator Warren has never been working for them since the day she was elected. She put our state in the rearview mirror to run for president in 2020. And my job is to work for the people of Massachusetts for the next six years, something she's unwilling to commit to, uh, even when she was on national television just a few weeks ago. And you're unwilling to commit to calling for the president to stop using Pocahontas as a racial epithet against your opponent. Last time, and then I got to go. It's not up to me to determine what the president does. I mean, again, it's something that I won't be talking about.